Hey guys, it's me, Vibs from Slidion. What's up? In this video, I'm gonna talk about how we can use floating action buttons in Android. Now, I know you've been waiting for a long time to see this, and hence, in this video, we'll cover the different ways you can do that and what are the different libraries that let you do the same thing. So, let's get started. So, you can do this the hard way that is, by creating an image view with a particular icon and placing it always on the right side inside of frame layout at the bottom of your screen and then setting some elevation to it to give it a shadow setting its size as per the material design requirements and then ensuring that when the user scrolls up and down you adjust the floating action button accordingly as per the material design specs but guess what we are going to be doing this in almost every other app that you and I are going to release and therefore I feel it's better that we get started directly with a library. Now with a lot of research and some efforts I have found out a list of 5 good libraries at the time of making this video that deal with the floating action button. I have added a link to all these libraries in the description text below of this video. Coming to the first one which is called floating action button you can see that it's pretty simple to add it. In fact I just told you just make a frame layout and add this floating action button inside it. If you were making your own floating action button, you would probably need to make a custom view to suit some of the requirements that material design imposes on floating action buttons. So this library is pretty simple, but there is no visual of how it may look. Let's switch to the next one called Fab by Shell Software. And as you can see, this is pretty good. It has some kind of animation setup like fade out, fade in, scale out and other types of animations here. Again, integrating this is pretty simple. You have a relative layout and you simply create an object of their custom view and that's it. And if you go to the third one here, that has some other features as well. For example, you scroll down, the floating action button disappears as you can see in the screenshot and it appears back again if you go to the top of your list. So I completely let you decide and in fact, tell me which floating action button library you think is the best comparing all five of them in the comments. Now this is quite a topic to debate. Now for me personally, I'll be using the last one which I haven't shown you yet. Here take a look at the next one which even gives you menu options like your Google Inbox app. And what's the minimum API version for this? Let me find out. It says this library is min SDK version equals to 14 and this library does not implement the quick return pattern. Okay. So going to the last one, this is the one which I think I'll be using in this video because this looks damn marvelous. Take a look at the way it animates the options out there. And the first question is, why would we need a floating action button in our library? Now don't use it unless you actually need it. In our case, we are going to have to sort the movie results. If you take a look at our current app here, I have changed the colors a bit to make things look a bit better here. Now there is no option for sorting this anywhere. Now we could add this in our overflow menu by going here and saying sort by name, sort by date, and sort by ratings. But it would be even better or more handy for the user if we can add a floating action button here with all the sorting options for this movie. And since all our three screens or three fragments are going to contain only movie results, it would be the best if we have a single floating action button throughout the app or throughout this entire activity that's going to let people sort stuff out. So let's get started. So the first step would be to add our compile time dependency. But before that, it says the requirement is API greater than 15. So in my case, I'm perfectly okay with that. I'm going to go here and change the API version min SDK to 15. And at the same time, I'm going to go there and add the compile time dependency that we have here. So simply copy the dependency and go back to our code here in Android Studio and add it at the bottom inside our build.gradle file. At this point, you can just go at the top and say sync the project with Gradle files here. And once you do that, our app is going to rebuild and download the dependency that we need. In the meantime, we can go here and create the first step, which says create an image view, set an icon for that image view. And then we need to create the floating action button object here, set that image view on it so that it becomes its icon. So let's go and do this inside our main activity, which contains our three tabs and the fragments out there. So that's going to be main activity here inside our on create method. We can do this all the way at the bottom here. So there inside my main activity, I created my image view here and I've set a background resource to that. Ideally, I would need an icon to represent sorting, but right now I don't have it and hence I'll work with the launcher icon that we have. So after this, the next step would be to create 
an object of the floating action button that they have specified here. Just take that here and put it floating action button. We need to import this class, create the import, set the icon that we just created above by simply passing the image view inside and build it. So let's see what happens if we run the app at this point. So right now running the app on pre lollipop and lollipop bam there's our floating action button though it looks pretty shitty right now like I said I don't have the right icon we haven't colored it we haven't given it a specific size or margin and all these things can be customized inside the sample code they have given on their library. The next thing that we would like to do is add the three options here for sorting based on name date and ratings. Let's go and do that back in our library for that we need to move to the step two which says create menu items here the sub menu items are going to need icons as well so i have created three image views here representing an icon for each condition that sort by name sort by date and sort by datings now at the time of making this video i don't have the icons for them maybe i'll find the icons before the next video and add the right ones inside our code so going back we need the sub menu builder which is the sub action dot builder we need to create an object of this we can simply copy paste that statement here and the next thing we need to do is actually construct the menu using the sub action button dot builder and that is shown here in the last step where they have tried to create a sub menu button here by saying sub action button button one and then they have used this builder object which is item builder and said item builder dot set content view and they have passed the icon that they have created for a button and then they have called build on it we need to repeat this step for the three different buttons that go inside our sub menu so let's copy paste the statement here and edit it as per our needs the first button in our case would be the button sort by name and once we do that the item builder is already here at the top all we need to do is specify the right icon for this button and that can be done by saying set content view pass the icon sort name here and then call build on it and that will build our button for the sub menu so we need to repeat this three times for the three different icons we have so there we are there's our button sort name button sort date and button sort ratings constructed accordingly now all we need to do is add these sub menu buttons or actions within the main menu that we created and that can be done with the help of this class which is floating action menu here you simply say floating action menu dot builder and you add sub action view and you pass the buttons to it and you attach it to the main action button which would be the floating action button in the first step to indicate that this is the main button and these are the sub buttons and you call build on it so let's do this as well simply copy paste this code here and you go to the third step here and we'll say floating action menu import that add our button this icon sort name oops it's button sort name button sort date and the button sort ratings the main button in our case or our floating action button will be action button object which we created right here at the top where we have set floating action button action button is new floating action button dot builder so once we are done with this we should be able to see our complete menu let's run the app and find out so there's our main floating action button you click on that and bam take a look at that there's our three little options that we have created as part of our sub action now uh, for some reason it's showing some other icon let me take a look at what I can do to change that oops I've set the same icon everywhere let me change it so after all icons have been set when you open the sub menu you can see the right icons come under the sub menu items that we have added but when we click on them nothing happens how can we direct that click to sort these results that we have inside the second fragment and most importantly this floating action button is everywhere throughout our activity how can we ensure that clicking on one of the options is going to trigger the sorting of the results inside that particular fragment the fragments are inside a view pager is it really that easy to access the fragments inside a view pager can you call adapter.getItem is it going to return null so many questions to be answered and so many things that are pending as far as our app is concerned in the meantime, let me know in the comments, what do you think about this library? Are there better libraries? Did you try the other libraries out? Can you make this floating action button in XML? Because I didn't see it in the samples here in the code. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.